Que viva México. Que viva San Antonio. Y que vivan todos los latinos que vinieron hoy para celebrar nuestra cultura. Gracias. Muchas gracias a la Cámara de Comercio Hispana de San Antonio. La ciudad de San Antonio y la primera señora increíble, Erika. Es una mujer tan fantástica para mí. Y su esposo, el alcalde Ron Nirenberg, y los ciudadanos de San Antonio. Este premio hoy es un gran honor para mí y para mi familia, porque soy tejana, soy mexicana-americana, y en mi corazón, mexicana. Mis raíces vienen de México y de Texas, soy del Paso, Texas. ¡Woo! Soy uh, norteamericana también y soy la producta de muchas generaciones de mexicanos que han luchado en México y aquí en los Estados Unidos por justicia y una vida próspera. First Lady Erika, I want to have that curriculum for my son too. I love your manifesto and for all the companies supporting it, for the, our youth to be entrepreneurs, you will be changing lives with these ideas. And that's so important. Many thanks to the Chamber CEO, Ramiro Cavazos, and the Board of Directors. Give yourselves a hand, Board of Directors, that all you do. You're uniting Latinos, and that is not an easy task. <laughs> Most of all, I want to thank all of the wonderful educators who are here tonight. All the educators, stand up, please. Stand up, educators. We need more educators. Because we all know right now it's tough to be Latino in this country. And we need to educate ourselves to go beyond the barriers. So anyone out there who's young and trying to figure it out, I say go for the PhD. I, I wanted to thank my beautiful son, Mateo. He, he, came, he wanted to come and he got a cold last night. And it was so sad because I wanted him to meet you. I wanted him to see this beautiful city. But he is my biggest inspiration and joy. And to my husband, Jai, to my family, my mother, Alicia Franco, who drove me to all those music lessons. And my brother, Michael Petri, an artist. And I wanna, I wanna thank all the companies who employed me. Pixar, Disney, DreamWorks Animation, Universal Studios, Warner Brothers, Fox, Sony, many others. All the independent directors and producers I've worked with. Thank you. And you know, we talked about educators. I am standing here because I had a fantastic mentor. His name is John Powell. And he is the original composer of Shrek, the Born Supremacy, the Born Ultimatum. I, I worked alongside him for many years. And without his kind support, I would never have gotten to the place I got to. And also have to thank my agent, because in Hollywood, you don't get anywhere without a good agent, Laura Engel. And I would like to thank the Ballet San Antonio for that beautiful dance to the music of Coco. So the last time I was here was in 2010, and I went to a screening at the Guadalupe Art Center, and I was so impressed with, God, there's so much culture here. It's like, I hadn't been in a long time. I had scored a documentary called Visions of Aslan by a legendary Chicano filmmaker named Jesus Trevino. And um, I, I walked around the city and I said, oh my God, I feel like I could live here. I really, I can see why you live here because there's, so many fantastic places, you take care of the city, you're, you're cultivating the Latino, the Mexicano culture, and it's very diverse. And I feel like you could give us a few lessons in Hollywood. 
So I'd also like to say, how about those spurs? I'm so sorry that my son couldn't come because he's a fan and, and he would have loved to sit next to the Admiral. So how, how do we get back to why I'm here? Um, how does a young Mexicana, Americana female make a living in music and break through these invisible but strong barriers? Well, I used survival tactics. Determination, see they're the things that you all probably use every day. Practice, you do it over and over. You focus, you're determined, you're resilient. Talk about failure, I've had my share, and you don't ever give up. I was a little drummer girl. At age 10, I decided music was my thing. I, as soon as I started playing music, that's all I wanted to do. I dropped swimming, I dropped gymnastics, cheerleading, because I wanted to be cool and be in the band. <laughs> so I got a scholarship to Rice University. I had $340 that I had earned by working at Walgreens, and I needed to eat. And so that's how my entrepreneurial skills started. It was a survival technique. I was looking for a way to pay for my college and earn some money, so I had four different jobs as a freshman. And as I was pondering, okay, what should I mention? I wanna say that nobody gets to the top without having had steps. It's a path, it's a process. Here's some of the jobs I had on my way to where I am today. Hairstylist, Radio Shack store manager, drummer for a hypnotist. <laughs> I really did do that gig. He would hypnotize people and we would play Una Gata de Vida and they had to dance to it. <laughs> it's true. Finally, as I got further up the chain, assistant to famous composer, session musician, orchestrator, composer, and finally music producer. And as a music producer, I've realized that I am an artist and I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businesswoman, I create music, and then I sell that music and it's a business. And although I write music, my basic function is a storyteller. I tell stories through music. And so how did a Latina woman pass through those closed doors and the glass ceiling of Hollywood? Well, the answer is one door at a time, one step at a time. So years later, after many thousands of hours, many late nights, uh, long days, working as a composer, musician, music producer, orchestrator, and arranger in Hollywood, I still find that being a female composer is not an easy task. Being a woman of color in music production in the culture of Hollywood is an anomaly. And as Erika mentioned, we are less than 3% of women working in this field and less than probably 0.05% are women of color. So we have to change that. When I walk into a recording studio in the control room, there are very few people who look like me. In the past, when I was working as an assistant in a studio, I was asked, could you get me some coffee? Are you the nanny? So some people have a preconceived notion of what Latinos can and cannot do and what we're capable of achieving. But by looking around, we know what we can do. We are that. So one thing I would say to anyone you know, tonight is don't let any other person give you a false perception of who you really are and give us a, a negative stereotype of our inner, of ourself. We know who we are inside, so let's remember that and take time to nurture that because while we're chasing our dreams, sometimes we forget about the inner path, and that's something that I've learned through meditation. Latinos, we are human beings. We're leaders, we're professionals, we're businesswomen, we're businessmen, 
And we shouldn't get distracted by the treatment, the remarks, the difficulties we face on a daily basis. Those are meant to keep us down, but we must proceed because we know our true place in this world. It's difficult for some people to accept us, but we don't need to ask for permission. We can be equal just being who we are. As Erika says, we must reclaim our identity. We lead by example. We don't take no for an answer. We must be the best in our fields. As we all know, people of color are often not given a second chance when they fail. So you have to be the best. I love Erika's plan to introduce entrepreneurial ideas to young Latino children. I will be teaching those to my son because I really want to know how to help my son become a better entrepreneur. What he does to get his extra money is he carries all my equipment. <laughs> And he, and he bargains, he plays on some of my tracks and he'll say, is it $5 per track? Or if I play a different instrument, do I get more? <laughs> so anyway, to, it, my final thought is what a beautiful moment to share with you tonight, to be here in your presence is my honor. It's my honor to see a beautiful community working together to create a beautiful life for their children, for families, and just to see the beautiful friendship I see amongst you. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's amazing. I feel something special here. It's, it's true. So I would like to say that what makes me different from any other Latina woman is education. There are women today working in sweatshops in LA. I could have been one of them I could be in that situation, but I have a degree. I have a master's degree in music. So I want to thank all my teachers who have taught me over the years that I am still learning. I still practice my piano. I still want to be the best that I can be. I'm so grateful to the city of San Antonio, the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, all the members, all of you being here tonight. This is an inaugural award for the Empresario for Equity, and I'm hoping that there will be many more artists and creators up here. Thank you so much, San Antonio. Que viva México, que viva San Antonio, y todos ustedes, gracias. Gracias.